Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, Season 3, Episode 5, Medium Minus. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Okay, taking the plus out of everything, my name is Jeffrey W. Ingram. And um, I guess I'm never negative, but I'm always Michael Miller. Jeff, minus what? Minus, mi- minus the usefulness. Minus so the usefulness. Is- we don't want to minus yeah. usefulness. So essentially, I want to talk about, you know, and it's really a specialty form of quirk. So what, what I really want to talk about here is essentially the there's this mythicness about fantasy. That's, that, that's what makes the stories fantasy based. But uh, there's a special kind of quirk um, for me that are, are related to characters that are either a derivative of existing powers they have or n- another power is either really small or it's like a sub specific use of it. Um, that makes um, that gives the character a lot of flavor and makes characters memorable. And you can't do this with every character, but have a character or two that have one of these types of sort of in-depth character quirks in stories. I think they're very inter- interesting. Um, and the, the thing that makes them a quirk is, and they can even be powerful, is just that they are not directly relevant to the story. Um, so... Uh, the one thing about here is there's in the wheel of time, there are many examples of this, but there's a character called Matram coffin. Matram coffin is luck. And the way it plays out story wise is he has like all of these memories of great generals, but the, which gives him like a, a natural uh, ability to, to lead, like be like a 19 year old general and like top tier but the thing that gives him the super edge is he's lucky. So it's like Lady Luck will play out in a way to give him the <laughs> opening in a battle to allow him to exploit and know how to exploit it because of his skills. So there's this luck element to him. But now the way to me it becomes what I call a medium minus is he uses it to gamble. And uh, so if he's playing a luck-based game, he cannot lose unless he wants to lose. And then in games where there's okay. l- some strategy and luck, he always gets the luck part on his side um, if he wants it to. The thing is, the way the story's written, you know, he doesn't build up enough wealth doing this to just buy out, you know, the big bad guy at the end. But you know, you know, it, it does help fund his army. So there is some indirect benefit uh, to the story. But largely, he didn't even need that to be able to take care of his army because he had benefactors. So. Um, uh, to me, it's it's this really thing where you know that he gets to town, he hears the dice in the end, he gets pulled right in. It's a character feature based off of the mythical powers. And I think it's an interesting way to build quirks with characters. It's it's kind of like the Greek idea of your you know your greatest flaw is your greatest <laughs> strength. But to me, it's like let's have things derived from your strengths that develop would, out the character better. So they're really quirks based off of your mythical power. Would you say that if we use um, Excalibur as an example, would you say that Arthur meeting uh, Lancelot on the road is an example of this? Cause you figure he's got the power from the sword and, and, but there's also an arrogance right to him because he's the King and he's like, this is the King's highway. And he's like, I can't let you go by. Yeah. And, he and even Lancelot straight up in the moment says, why would you fight a man to death who is not your Emmy enemy for a small patch of road? You can easily ride around. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it was, I don't think this, that would be a medium minus. That's really his, that's really more of a flaw. Yeah. You know, and so, you, so, so you're only counting it if it, if it's a, a more, a more of a positive personality characteristic it's probably going to be positive it doesn't necessarily have to be but it's it, it, it's it's not story related it's it's really more of a well it's like a hand gesture it's sort of like i tap my finger 
okay. on my computer uh, whenever I talk uh, via Zoom, uh, which isn't true. But if I did do that, that'd be a character quirk. But this is one derived from a mythical power set. And to me, they're usually extremely wasteful. You know, it'd be like, I am a super wizard. I live on the beach and I use my magic to create waves to go surfing. Okay. You know, where that would be an extreme power. Like, oh my God, he's creating waves. But it's like, it's, it's in a way, it's exceptionally wasteful because it's like he's spending his super magical powers to have perfect waves to ride in on. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's like he's that looking cool doing him, it. You know, and it would make him different than like a Gandalf or, you know, it's, it's a way to differentiate the character from other characters that are similar, similar archetypes. But, um, it's it's kind of based off of the power set. Another one I think about that's a lot more subtle, uh, and this isn't a fantasy, is uh, and I forget the name of the character. I feel bad. One of the background characters in uh, Blade Runner would always make origami pieces. <clears throat> oh, um, uh, oh gosh, that was Edward James. Almost is the is the yes. Actor. That was uh, I don't remember the, the name of the character. I just remember yeah. I'm drawing a blank on the character's name as well. Sorry, <clears throat> but yeah, I, you know. And I think I remembered mention we talked something about that we were talking about small quirks in another episode recently. And I had yeah. mentioned there was something that I watched with Forrest Wh- Whitaker where every now and then he would pull a chess piece out of his pocket. And they never explain it. Yeah, they, they never, never explain, explain it. And to me, it. if it's related to his mythical powers, mm-hmm. you know what makes him Superman in his story that that becomes a medium minus quirk so it's really it's it's either directly off of a skill you know it's the idea of uh gambit you know uh in the x-men would always be playing with cards in his hand Mm. well he could also supercharge and then throw the cards Mm. but the fact that he's fidgeting with cards all the time it's 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 kind of a one off from his power it's like you know it's it's what was that the six degrees of separation from kevin bacon or whatever the heck that yeah. was for a while you know but this idea is like it's it's a one off of the power or maybe it's like you know i i keep so many minor demons in my hand just to taunt them that might be a quirk of my mage uh not needed for the story i i probably you know and like indirectly they might influence the story but there's there's there would be other ways that you could do it. It's really, and it's really meant more to flavor your character. It's you know I've talked about this with 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 quirks before. They are the salt and pepper, you know, of your um or you know they are the seasoning on on the flavor of your character. And these are really just a specific one that is taking advantage of the power set. And like I said, sometimes they're extremely wasteful because it's like, you know, it would take great power to do it, you know, but you know, there's no point. So it's like, it's like environmentally a waste. Right. But yeah, it, it gets back to one. And, and I know this is going to be a short episode, but quirks are so important. You know, I wanted to, to really spend some time on, on, on this short one here, the medium minus, as I like to call it, which is, and it, it could be a negative, right. But it would be just sort of like, it would slow them down. Like I'm a thief and I, I can't leave a door locked. <laughs> Well, I would think that would be outside of my doors. Um, or that, that could go to the level of a flaw. It depends on how you play it out in the story, right? But it's like you're getting ready to go break in somewhere, and like there's another door in the alley, and you just you have to pick it. You have to pick it um, open, yeah. Um, and it might not go to, the, and it might not be quite as like OCD as I said it there. But, mm-hmm. but see, sometimes you just sit there, and and when you come up with these things, you're trying to come up with a like a quirk. It might not be like I really want to do that, but that sounds more like a disadvantage, and you might shift it there, right? It might really become a flaw <laughs> because really, if like every time he saw a lock, locked door to an OCD level, would have to open it, you know. Uh, but you could move it back to the level where if it catches his eye or, you know, like, oh, I haven't seen this lock in such a long time and it's a sentimental value maybe. But I also feel like you're talking about like if there is a more significant power present and this is like a derivative use. So say for sake of argument, okay, he is your thief and he mm-hmm. can't leave a door unlocked, but I, wouldn't it be more appropriate if this thief could wave his hand to open locks. Yes. Like like he's like that is incredibly powerful, but just to walk around going unlocked, 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 unlocked. You know what I mean? That Mm -hmm. way he's using a very powerful, you know, ability, but just to do something really, you know, silly. Or it's like in Skyrim they had the lock pick of um I forget what it was called, but like it would never break. And it's like 
you know, it's like, you know, you find like this, like, like indoor lock on a house that you put a screwdriver in and twist to unlock it. But he, he has to go through his coat to find the, the powerful super, artifact super thing. Yeah. <laughs> to put into the, to the key ring. But yeah, that's, and that's kind of the difference between a quirk, you know, you know, potentially a flaw as Michael uh, uh, did pointedly point out, or a yeah, medium minus is when it's like, <clears throat> I'm a mage and I have, and I just, I just, I always use the magic. Remember it weakens me. So in a way it could have uh, hand, some impact on the story. Hand, hand me Excalibur. I must open this can of soup. I must open this door. Shrink, <laughs> you know, um, but that would be a way to really make it, you know, a medium minus is when you have the quirks sit there and go, okay, could these be a one off from the powers, you know, and how can I take advantage of that? You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the idea in, um, uh, what was that? The, uh, princess's bride where the two swordsmen go to face off with each other and they both start in the, with the wrong hand, mm. you know, and it's like, they're good enough that they're not going to get toasted by anyone in the even, offhand, so it's even really, off, even offhanded. Yeah. It's showing off their personality a little bit, but you know what doing it, you know, what is, um, <laughs> what's even it, and i don't know that i don't know that you always pick this up or, or or people always pick this up they're so good with their off hand both of them mm-hmm. that they're picking up that the other is quite a master which means he's a master even with his off hand even with his off hand that's right and then he like decides that. well this guy's good enough with I'm gonna left, have to switch to that. I'm gonna have to switch to my dominant hand, and the other guy is like, "Yeah, I'm not left-handed either." And it's like, "Oh, oh, oh, he's that much better." Also, yeah. <laughs> so there's there's yeah, really so, a and, lot and the being is, said there without because the medium minus you can actually tell stuff about your character's personality. Like if you had a great swordsman who was about efficiency and about just finishing the job, they would never consider that. Mm. You know, they would never consider flurries. It would be, "I'm just going to put my sword in your heart and move on." You know, but the thing is, uh, it would be a, um, something would that you be wouldn't fun. use with that kind of character. Right. So the thing is, the neat thing is when you start getting around the characters, you're showing uh, a playful side, potentially a wasteful side of characters. But you're also, you, you can get to a deeper truth on characters and show it through their power set, but in a way that's not tied and critically important to the plot of the story. Like, you know, they did not need to do the hand switching and the princess's bride movie because the sword fighting looked fabulous and mm. and, and to at least it, an untrained it, it eye still like holds me, up you know i watched that scene like holy crap this is really cool they didn't even have to do that and i <laughs> got the idea they were both masters they really reinforced the idea it made it harder for people to miss that these were great swordsmen by adding that in but it said that the other one of the characters were actually bad and that mm. was the first time in the story where you're like well you know wesley's not a bad character even though he's the dread pirate roberts of these bad guys, you know, you know, you know, at least the non Sicilian guy isn't pure evil, you know, and you know, so you know, it, it starts to tell you about the bad guy troop as well, and 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 and, and it informs you about the characters, which is the point of quirks, you know. It's like I keep saying that it, you know, they're strictly these ways to to show more, but they're really they're showing you the the, the hidden truths of characters. And and when it's based off of the power set, it really gets there, you know, you know, the fact that, you know, if you have the invulnerable Superman character next to you and whenever he thinks you're in danger, he steps between you and the danger that says something mm. that one, you know, he obviously has faith in his ability to take the shot better than you. But uh, the fact that he cares about the person behind him. Mm. You know, um, I, I, I think it speaks more when you have a Steve Rogers jumping on what he thought was a live grenade. Yes, it, it, it does he's, a lot more there. He, yeah. He's still scrawny. <laughs> and that, that was his medium minus quirk, right? Like he was selfless and they, they displayed it through a classic military trope of falling on the grenade. Um, because trust me, that's something that like if you're in the military, you learn about in basic. You know, and they don't teach you to jump on the grenade. It's like the drill sergeant's like, listen, these are really dangerous toys. And they don't call them that. But, you know, these are really dangerous. When we're here. If you drop it, I'm going to throw you on it and I'm going to jump away. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah. And, 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 of course, he's saying that with a live grenade. 
with a live grenade in his hand. But yeah. you know, the, the thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, when it comes to characters, you know, it's like how, you know, quirks are ways that you can display a truth about a character. And to me and my, it's strictly, it's really just about talking about reinforcing the character set and a, a portion of the character. So, um, I think it's important, and we're probably gonna have more episodes like this where we kind of like delve deep into um, uh, ideas that aren't necessarily going to take thirty minutes. Even though Michael and I have a way of making them go at least four hours. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question: it, Would you also call it a a medium minus if it was a, let's say, it's something that is not like obsessive compulsive, but compulsory? Like, let's say there's something that the character can't really help and it is based on their power. You know what I mean? It becomes, it becomes a medium minus when it's not story. The story is not dependent upon it. So when it's telling the truth about the character or showing off how their powers work or a limit to their powers, uh, that's a medium minus. Um, when it's like, you need that, that power to fail, you know, and, and, and the fourth scene of the third act, uh, then that becomes uh, that, that actually is character development, you know, and story development. So later on, you're foreshadowing that, you know, um, that, you know, if Steve Rogers later on in the movie had to jump on a grenade and die, mm. you would have foreshadowed he was willing to do it earlier with that scene. But yeah. when it's not foreshadowing, it's a medium minus. Okay. All right. So well, that uh, is really it this week. So folks. today's real world task go jump on a grenade. This had the bullets one from last episode. There's certain things we don't want to test out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> All right, so what is the uh, world builder task? Give your character, and you have to pick the right character. That's the trick here. A really wasteful use of a high power. No, like Make it. yourself a surfer wizard. Surfer, <laughs> surfer wizard. Dude. Charlie, Charlie, don't surf. <clears throat> Bill, Ted, and Merlin X. You know, and the real world task is to take the plus out of more things because of Disney Plus. You know, for a while, everyone had an eye in front of stuff. Now everyone's adding a plus to the back of stuff. <laughs> yep. Let's cut the plus, the minus out. Of just stuff. Get, just get rid of the pluses. That's we are... not really the the real world power, but it, it could be because I am not serious about that. Um, uh, what we need is uh, learn. You know, do like some Google in here and learn some stretches and exercises you can do at your desk. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, and there are things you can do. A lot of them are isometric uh, in nature, um, but you can you can sit there and you can do stretching while you're at your desk. Just a, a way to get a little bit more exercise, even when you know you know if you're a programmer or customer service or something where you're sitting down all day, you have to sit down all day. So just a, you know, in, in furthering improving ourselves physically, you know, and I'm probably the most knowledgeable person on physical prowess. Probably, but uh, probably not. But, probably. Um, but you know, hey, these are things I I have to work through, you know, and and so, but they're they're good things to think about. So I hope you all have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the myth was hot. <laughs>